All right. Good at, good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon, depending on where you are um, in the country. I'm actually on the East Coast, so uh, I just want to welcome everybody here. And first of all, to say thank you for allowing me to be here. I understand this this is a great opportunity to share with some adult learners. You know what a great organization to be a part of. You know what a great network, especially you know when you're moving and you're in an online space. So to have an opportunity to come together virtually, you know, in a conference like this, um, I think that speaks volumes to the school, you know, that you guys are at and, you know, how they want to represent themselves, you know, as well as provide those additional resources for you. So I understand that, uh, that I'm, I'm here, you know, and this is an African-American driven uh, event uh, as well as all the speakers. So again, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of what's going on. As you can see on the screen, my name is Marlo Prelo, okay, Prelo, and college graduate, business owner. So I want to talk about a few different things. Um, we're going to talk about the path to success, you know, which I feel like is super, super, super important. Everybody has a path to take. Everybody is on a different path, and you know, it just depends on what direction you're trying to move in. Everybody can be successful, and we want to talk about success and what that looks like because it, success is different and it looks different for each individual okay it looks different for everybody so we're going to talk about a few of those different things as well and then i'm going to give you guys three keys or what i think are three keys to soft skill success all right when you talk about success you can think about it in two different ways you've got hard skills and you've got soft skills but the thing that the thing that excites me the most about this conference in particular is just the title, okay? When you talk about investment, struggle, and harvest, okay? I think those are those are three words. Those are three key words. Those are great words, um, and we're gonna. I definitely want to break those down and kind of look at each one of those. But Velocity Education Group. I'll tell you a little bit about myself before we kind of deep dive into that. So again, my name is Marlo Prelo. I am the owner and director of learning for. Velocity Education Group. You can visit us at www.velocityeducationgroup.com. Um, we got a small group, so we'll, we'll definitely feel free, guys, to you know come off mute and we can have some some conversation here as well. So, Velocity Education Group is an education consulting company that I founded uh, a little bit over probably eight years ago. I've been working in the space uh, in education consulting for a long time. Started off working with kids in the inner city, you know, really trying to reach back and do some different things in the community. So we developed a few different educational products, which, you know, we'll show you those products as well. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you a little bit more about the company kind of as we move forward. So education is one of my things. I am a proponent of educating yourself. So I'm so excited that you guys have chosen to go back to school, even at a later stage, you know, whether you're getting a bachelor's degree a master's degree, you know, whether you're a first time learner at, at any path, doesn't matter which entry point you're coming into, you know, you've made a conscious decision to go back to do something to better yourself for to better your life for yourself and your family, uh, which which I think is an amazing thing. And it's, it's hard to go back as an adult learner. We're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. So the investment, the struggle and the harvest. OK. The investment, the struggle, and the harvest. I, I just, I love those words. When I started looking at it and breaking it down, you know, I want you guys to go ahead and, and just chime into the chat and tell me which of these words you feel like kind of speaks to you specifically. When you hear those words, investment, struggle, and harvest, which one of those words really jumps out at you? The struggle, come on, Nicole, come on, Michael, come on, Iris, the struggle. Sergeant Major said, nah, for me, it's the harvest. Jade said it's the struggle. Okay, all right, so, so the struggle, the struggle, Paul, we are definitely struggle team. It looks like we are on the struggle bus, okay? We got Dr. Newton there, Newt said the harvest, Daniel said the struggle, okay? All right, guys, that, that's cool. I, I appreciate everybody. Hey, Jade, come on now. 
we this is a small group. If you guys want to come off mute, you know, you certainly can. We can definitely keep it, you know, make it a little bit more uh, more informal. But we've all been on the struggle bus, okay? And when you talk about the investment, the struggle, and the harvest, those are all important things. And it's I think it's normal to gravitate toward the struggle because we always feel like, oh my God, man, I am struggling. You know, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to figure it out. I actually, when, when I looked at this and I was thinking about the exercise, the piece that jumped out to me was the investment because obviously the struggle is going to be there. So if I had to rewrite this, I would probably rewrite it and say struggle, investment, harvest. Because without the struggle, which you guys have already pointed out to, that's the most critical, the most crucial piece. Without the struggle, you don't make it to the harvest. But without the investment, you also don't make it to the harvest. Now, as we know, when it's time to make an investment and invest monies, you know, because that's the typical thing that people equate investment to, the more you put in, the more you're going to get out, right? So the bigger the investment, the more struggle you have, the greater your harvest, you know, is going to be in the end. And I, I think once we kind of work through the presentation, you guys are going to get a good idea um, and, and kind of understand how all of those things kind of correlate together. So I appreciate everybody for chiming into the chat. Um, we, we own team struggle bus, but hopefully once we get to the end of, of this presentation, we know we'll have some tips and some tricks and some better ideas on how to get off the struggle bus, you know, and get more into the investment side, you know, so we can start walking and growing, you know, and really get into the harvest. Okay. All right. So. Everybody who chimed in on the struggle, you know, and I and I put this picture up, up here for a reason. When you talk about the struggle, everybody has obviously gone through some different things in life, right? Probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a little bit of struggle. But it's interesting because when I look at my own children who are Starbucks drinking, Chick-fil-A eating, Target shopping, you know, nine-year-olds. I'm like, you know, their struggle, they really aren't in the struggle, you know, as much. But it's very important to me that I make sure I share the stories and the things that we've gone through so that they understand, you know, that they are living a privileged life. So we can't talk about the harvest and we cannot talk about the investment. Well, hey, Jay, that sound like your kids in five? I know, I already know. Starbucks drinking, Chick-fil-A eating, and target shopping. I just, I don't understand, you know, how we let that happen. Michael, those your kids too? Okay, well, you know what? I'm a, since, since those your kids too, I'm going to send my kids over for your, to your house so you can take them to Chick-fil-A and Starbucks, and I'm going to let y'all take care of that and so I can have a break on my bank account, okay? Because my daughter is nine years old. She like the final thing. She, she want the S&S gel when she go to the nail salon. And I'm like, no, give her the $9, the $10 nine-year-old special, okay? That's why we still struggle. My son expects all that. I bet he does. But you know what? We guilty because we did it. You know what I'm saying? I tell him, Michael, we got the tears in his eyes. We did it. And that, and that's not the rock, rocks and the hot wax. Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. We're not, we're not doing that. I don't spend $200 on myself. So I refuse to go in the nail salon. You know, they, they got me for $85 one day. I was, I was a little upset. They got me for 85 one day. So when we talk about the struggle, I think that it's important. And it's good that everybody's kind of talking about what they're doing with their kids and, you know, where they are. And it's great that they're already, you know, at a certain level of expectation. But what we have to do to make sure they understand where the line is and make sure that they know you know what? Everybody is not experiencing this same thing. We got to make sure they know about the struggle and have those conversations. So when I put this picture together and I was looking at it, you know, this is a picture of me when I was in high school. OK, this is my actual high school ID. All right. Now, you guys right now, you're, you're in college and you're college students, even though, you know, you guys are adult learners. So when you look at this picture, I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions. You know, when you see this guy, you know, you're looking at his hair. Who is this guy? You know, do you think this and you can you guys can answer in the chat or you can come off of mute if you want. You think this guy is rich by looking at his photo. Mm. 
Maybe not. Paul said, no, no. Danielle, no, Nicole, no, 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 no. Okay. Stay in the chat, guys. Stay with me. You think this guy has on designer clothes? Look at look at his shirt. You know, that's he got on a pretty, pretty jazzy shirt. You think his shirt is designer? Middle class. Okay, Javon. Appreciate you throwing, throwing a throwing a glimmer of hope out there. Get low designer. <laughs> Looks like he has his older brother's shirt. All right, fantastic. I, I, I like that. We're going to hold on to that, okay? We're going to hold on to that. You think this guy lives in a big house? Okay, Dan, you said it's not a bad shirt. You know, it, it wasn't. It's not a bad shirt. You think he lives in a big house? You think about his living arrangement. Okay, Paul. Paul, I like that. Paul says it's hard to say. Apartment complex. All right, Javon, I like that. I like that. What I want to do here is paint the picture. Agreed. Hard to say. Okay. So does he look like he's intelligent or intellectual? You think he's smart? May I say something? Yes. One of the things, I'm 42 years old, so I'm, I'm very open with all of what I've been through. But one of the things I always tell people is never assume what you think you see, because what you think you see, you may not know anything about what you think you see. There you go. Come on, Mimi. Say again for the people in the back. You A then, lot of what we go through, you know, in life, especially when we look at people, he's smart. Every kid is. His face shows life experience, you know, for, for ID photo. And I'm sure he's a bright kid. Okay, you guys, and you guys are all right. So the guy that you're looking at in the picture, you know, is me. You know, this is me when I was in my freshman year going into high school. The reason I like to talk about this picture and the struggle, you know, that we were going through at that time was because, and I put the phrase up here, I ain't going to college, okay? So I appreciate everybody that's in this room right now because right now you had a vision for your life and you said, I'm gonna go back and get this done no matter what, okay? But you cannot fall to the insecurities and that's what a lot of people do. People judge this guy. Now, I want you to look at his face, you know, look at those eyes. You guys said, I see experience, College is tough, but I'm doing it. That's right, Jade. I see experience. We know he's not rich. He doesn't have the money. Somebody said, said it looks like he has on his older brother's shirt. This was my older sister's shirt. Okay? Because we came out of a situation where we lived in a two-bedroom apartment with 11 people. And we were in that apartment, you know, and growing up in that apartment in Section 8, then we got out of that apartment, moved to a small house, same amount of people, we all were going through the struggle. We all were going through the same thing. Plenty of nights, we didn't eat. You know, we didn't have food. This guy used to sneak in his neighbor's house when I knew everybody was going to work and slide all the change off the dresser. And I didn't do it because I was this bad kid and I just wanted to wreak havoc. I did it because I was in survival mode. Now you look at his face. He doesn't have a haircut. He got on an oversized shirt. You can imagine, you know, what the rest of his situation may possibly be like. But this guy, when you talk about the struggle bus, being in a struggle situation, when you're in a situation and you're at the bottom and you're looking up and you don't see no way out except for your environment and what you see every day, those are the things you start to gravitate towards. So at this stage in life right here, because we're talking about the struggle before the investment, before the harvest, at this stage right here, growing up in the 80s in South Carolina, you guys know, if anybody grew up in the 80s, there was one thing that was tearing through the community, okay? And that was crack cocaine. It was ripping the black community apart. See, Javon even said it. He knows the 80s and the early 90s was a prevalent time when drugs was really ripping through the black and brown community and the gangs was really starting to migrate from the West Coast all the way over and started getting into the South. So for me, what I saw every day in this neighborhood of crime, violence, gunshots, you know, all these different things, I wanted to be a drug dealer. I said, man, going to school is too hard. It's too much work. 
It's too much responsibility. I don't want to do that. But I see these guys making lots of money. This guy comes to the bus stop every day. He's got a wad of cash, this fat. And he says, man, you guys going to school, man. Y'all wasting time. Y'all should come and work with me. So immediately, from an ROI standpoint, I'm thinking, I go to school. I make no money. I go hang out with this guy. I could possibly make more money than I'm making right now. So I tried my hand. And I immediately knew, oh, we got a hand raised. All right, hold on, let me get to um, Mimi, you got a hand up. Go ahead, Mimi, you got a question? I just wanted to say kudos. I'm just listening to your story right now and I'm sitting up here like, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I just, I really, because mine, I get why you had to steal that change. And, and my parent, my mother, she used to work for a really, I guess, nice company back in the day, but I had to steal her money Mm -hmm. because she was not, she was refusing to feed me Mm -hmm. for months at a time Mm -hmm. so that my brother and I, I had to, and you know, we, I have my own children. I'm like, Mm -hmm. don't steal from your mama. Don't steal from nobody, but don't steal from me because I will do what I need to do in order to get what you got to get even for your school supplies, right? Right, right. That's basic. And I remember when milk was a quarter Mm -hmm. in school. And I had to only buy milk mm. and try to save them quarters. So go, keep going. I'm sorry, I ain't go in. No, no, but that's but that's a good point because I I want everybody on the call for a second to just not let's just not forget how far we've come. But there's a huge demographic, and it's a big population of people right now who still going to school every day who look just like this. They got on the big sister shirt because me and my sister had to share clothes. She wore the jeans on Monday. I wore the jeans on Tuesday. We went through that. We had to go to school with the ridicule, you know, and get into the fights at the bus stop. And I remember I was, I threw my jacket off, man, because I'm getting ready to get into it. And now my jacket is gone. And I'm in, it's the middle of winter. Now I don't even have a coat for the winter. I remember sleeping, waking up in the house. The house would be so cold. We would put our clothes on the night before, whatever we were going to wear the next day, just so we didn't have to get dressed in the cold. And you could blow the smoke laying in the bed. I would just exhale and I could see my breath right in front of me. That's how cold it was. So when you start talking about the struggle, the harvest and the investment, don't get lightly. Because without the investment and the harvest, you don't end up getting to the success and getting to where you need to be. So share those things with your children. Make sure that they know get them around other people, you know, let them hear these stories so that they can be more in tune with what's going on, you know, so they're not out here thinking that this is the way of the world and this is just how it goes. All right, we got another hand up. Let's, um, we definitely going to get all hands. We're going to get all comments. Go, go ahead with your comment. I thought I saw a hand up. So many children living like us all, all around. That's right. That's me. I had many days that I went without eating so much older children could eat okay my 12 year old doesn't have to go through that that's right the struggle is very real now look at look at this here's a scenario we have college grad people that are in school still moving towards trying to make a better way for themselves and we're still talking about the right of not eating we had a lock on the refrigerator so you had to ask if you could even go into the kitchen to go to the fridge if the lock wasn't even on it so the basic, what some people call basic necessity is not necessarily the line for everybody. Look at, look at the comments in the comment section. I, I read off a couple of them, but I want you guys to just let that soak in and let's not forget where we come from and not forget that there's still people out here that's still trying to fight it out. Every day I drive home, I go to my house, two car garage, I park and me and my daughter go and have activities and do all kinds of things, but I'm not going to forget that somebody somewhere last night didn't eat last night, okay? And that's the fuel that we got to keep holding on to and keep using as we continue to move forward, okay? So definitely, definitely want to share that. Tamika, I appreciate that. Sharing the struggle with the children who no longer struggle. We teach them empathy, right? I was the kid who had less than that's right. Girl dads are awesome. Yeah, my, my daughter's awesome. She's, uh, she's super extra spoiled. And what I make sure that I draw the line with her so she understands, you know, just how spoiled she is. All right. So 
that's that is that's that's just a little bit on the struggle. I just wanted to make sure that, that we kind of I'll trade you three boys, man. Hey, three boys is probably the equivalent of one girl. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you'd be up to that trade, bro. Girls, man, you start talking about hair, nails, outfit. You know, it's yeah, it's something. All right. So in the middle of this caption, there's one more important piece. Okay. Now this is a pop quiz. Earlier, I said what my name was. And if you look at the at the caption here, you see you see a different name. All right. On the caption, it says Marlo Williams. All right. Because that's where I started at. But I ended up changing my name to Marlo Prelo, which was my dad's name. And the reason I wanted to highlight that and bring that up is because as you move through life, once you find yourself coming out of the struggle, because you will come out of the struggle, I guarantee it. If you continue to put in the work, it will end and you can elevate yourself and move forward. My elevation was so massive, girl, I had to change my name. I was no longer the person who I started off as. You know, so I like to tell people it's not about how you start, it's all about how you finish. That dramatic change, that metamorphosis, it was so real. I didn't even want people calling me by my old name. I didn't even want to be associated with my old name. That's how much I had changed. And, you know, I, we, we, we give thanks to, you know, the individuals above for those types of situations. Come on, Mimi. Come on, go ahead and go, come off mute. You good? Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm very spiritual over here. I'm I just want my I'm letting my twin daughters sleep, sleep in late, but one of them kind of look because I'm up here screaming in our in our apartment. When you talk about changing your name, as I and I'm like Jacob, people be stuck on scripture where they keep calling him Jacob, but Jacob's name was Israel. Israel. His change his name change occurred. That's what you people should have called. And in that true spirit. I literally am in that process of getting my name changed because mm. the old me is gone. I get to publish mm. about the old me, but the new me is already here. It was already there when I was born, Be but gone. I didn't know what I had until four, three to four decades later. And God told me three years ago what my name was to be changed to. And now we're in that season where it's going. it's going to be changed. So I'm just going to say y'all, Everybody, every sometime when you come with your birth name, that is not always the name you are to stay with. <laughs> Speak on it. Come on now. Listen, this is an information session. Okay. We are going to share. We're going to learn. We're going to grow and we're going to move forward. Now I'm watching all the comments. I might not comment on all the comments, but please know that we are watching all comments guys. And we appreciate that y'all spitting some real game in the comment section, okay? I got a feeling it's, 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 this getting ready to be a breakthrough. Somebody gonna have a breakthrough on this Zoom today. And somebody said that they working on starting a business. Who was that, Iris? My next goal is to be my own boss along with this new path of continuing my education. You know what, it's funny you should say that because we're gonna talk about that, all right? I'm gonna give you guys some, some jewels um, regarding that as well. All right. All right, guys. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to keep it moving. Keep the comments coming because that's how you learn and share by communicating. And that's how we all grow together. OK. All right. The struggle was real. OK. But I'm here as living proof and as living testimony that if you put in the work. If you make the investment. You can reap the harvest. And I'm going to tell you what that started to look like for me right now. OK. College, man, you guys are college students, man. I am so proud of everybody that's on this call right now, okay? I'm in uh, I'm in the mentoring program at UHGC. It's been great. Okay, good, good, Iris. That's good. Good, 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 good. What is the point of college? Like, why are you even here? I know at some point you made a decision and said, oh, I think I want to go back to school. Uh, I'm going to call one of these enrollment guys. They called you up. They got you on the phone. They took you through this process. You probably answered a bunch of questions. Elevate my life. Come on, Jay, speak. You work with enrollment counselor, and now you're here. Okay? But what is the reason? All right, Jay said more. Jay, can you come off mute and just and say that out loud for us? 
Of course. So I, I wanted to go back to college because I'm a single mother of two little girls who are three and five years old. And when they were infants, I told them they deserve the world and I want to give it to them. So I went back to college so that I can have more access to money to provide them with the life that they deserve and more access to the resources that they deserve for the education they deserve for the home they deserve to live in and down to the color of the fingernail polish on our fingernails, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> having these little girls, you know, so, so that's why I'm in college. You know, I, I wanted to set the bar for my kids and let them know that, you know, finish what you start and be a woman of your word. Ooh, finish what you start. Oh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Amen. I appreciate that. Fantastic. Access to money. Oh, uh, money and resources. All right. Mimi said after last year, she said, I, I don't know what I got to do, but I'm going to law school. You keep on that. All right. Stay on that track. Stay on that. To be the start of generational wealth. Okay, Javon, I hear that. Okay. Okay. Those are all, those are all amazing answers, guys. And I love that. I always like to find out, you know, what is the reason that you're here? Okay. Because when I was growing up, you know, I used to always say, I ain't going to college. You know, hold on. Daniel said, I'm currently on active duty. He wants to eventually start his own nonprofit and potential corporation that focuses on <clears throat> investment in the education and the community. Okay, good, 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 good deal, Javon, and breaking in generational property. All right. Yo, you guys, man, I, I might as well just turn this thing over to y'all because you guys have all the answers. You know, you have all, all the firepower. Everything that, that I'm thinking is what you guys are already thinking. Oh, we're going to talk about procrastination hours. I'm not even going to read that comment because we're going we're gonna to get into that as well. So when I think about college, what's the point? Okay, you're going to, I want you to think about it from two different aspects. The number one aspect, and you guys are right. You want to break generational curses. You want to gain more money. You want to gain access. You want to gain knowledge. You want to learn an additional skill, right? But when you go to your job, is your manager going to say, hey, man, Good job on breaking those generational curses. Hey, now he's not going to say that. That's an internal driver for you. Okay. He's not going to look at you and say, I'm glad you're here because you want to provide for your family. He's not going to say that. Okay. Self care. Oh, that is definitely self care. What an employer, when you, I want you to look at it from your internal point, but I also want you to think about it from the employer standpoint because ultimately you're here because you want to elevate yourself to put yourself in a position to get higher paid, higher paying wages so that you can take care of your family, right? Now, the employer is the key or the gateway to you getting those higher wages. So to an employer, what a college degree means is, it means one thing. It says, this is somebody who knows how to think critically, move through a system, whether it's good, bad, up, down, highs and lows, this is a person who knows how to get things done, okay? And in order to do that, you have to be a taskmaster and you have to develop a finishing mindset. Somebody already had touched on that earlier about procrastination. I wanna talk about that when I talk about fin having a finishing mindset. You have to be able to finish what you start. I think Iris, I think Mimi said it earlier being able to finish what you start. Somebody said, finish what you start early. All these things are a part of the your moral DNA, okay? And these are the things that the employers are gonna be looking for. So when you go to get that job and he's looking at your resume and he brings you in here, the reason the college degree is so important is it says, I'm somebody who knows how to finish. It means I can start at the beginning, work through problems, issues, criticisms, car broke down, rent was late, had other issues, got laid off, my kids acting crazy, I'm trying to go to church, can't get no help there, but no matter what life threw at you, because life is going to throw some things at you, this we already know, but what a college degree says is no matter what happens, I was able to sustain a four-year program, whether it's two years or four years, get through it, through all the bumps and the bruises. And now here I stand victoriously at the end with this degree in my hand. So what that tells an employer is this person has grit. If I bring this guy in 
he's going to do what I'm asking him to do. Because if he didn't have the degree, that's why everybody doesn't have it. And it's cliche. You hear people say it all the time. Well, you know, people don't have, everybody don't have degrees. An employer is looking for that one thing. I want to know that if I give you this assignment, you're going to be able to take this assignment, read it, critically analyze it, understand it, move, do it, give it back to me in a manner in which I understand so that I don't have to go back and forth with you, ask you a bunch of questions. I ain't going back and forth with you. I want you to just do it, get it done and move on. Right. And if there's any managers in here, I know I saw somebody in here early from the military. The number one thing you want somebody to do is when you give them an order is do it. You don't want to hear any back talk. You don't want to go around and around on the pinwheel. Here it is. Do it. And that's it. That's what a college degree does. That's what it says. And I wish they would print on the back the word finished. Because a lot of people don't know what it means to finish and to actually complete something and to actually do something that's important. That's much more important than a lot of other things that are out there. So do not take this lightly. Having a college degree speaks volumes and it's gonna do so many things for you from a career aspect. So don't take it lightly because from an employer standpoint, that's what they're looking for and that's what they want, okay? So that's the reason. That's proprietary information. That is what I have discovered from working in corporate America, you know, moving through these systems and just trying to help people bridge the gap and understand, you know, why am I even doing this? Because we hear that question a lot, even through Velocity Education Group, whether I'm working with adults or if I'm working with kids, sometimes they don't fully understand the why. So, and I would say this too, even with your own kids and young people that you might be working with, you know, out in your community, make sure you drive the why. Because we're going to get to a point where everybody's going to start thinking, yeah, maybe I should go to college because my mama said so, or my daddy said so, my aunt or my uncle, or the job telling me I should do it. But just remember that as the why, okay? And let that continue to drive you when you have those moments you know, of self-doubt or when you start feeling like, man, it's getting hard. I'm feeling like I want to quit. I feel like I should call my advisor and tell him, you know, give me three weeks off. Don't do it. Remember the why, okay? Remember why you're there, okay? I like the finished imagery. Completion is so important. It is. Now, let me break this down to you as well, though. When you start talking about finishing tasks, you know, and, and having a finishing mindset, I have developed a finishing mindset. I don't care what it is. If I'm eating a bowl of cereal, I'm going to finish it. I don't like to look on the counter and see a half-eaten bowl of cereal with milk in it. Because what just happened? We just made, wasted money. We wasted resources. We wasted a whole lot of stuff just in that one scenario. Now, the average person going to think, man, that's stupid. That ain't nothing. Who cares my kid filled up a whole gallon bowl of cereal and milk and ate a little bit of it and didn't eat it all? That's a waste of resources. But if you really want to become a finisher, a super finisher, and have a finisher mindset, you have to learn and develop the practice of finishing everything you start, everything you touch. I don't care if it's making up the bed, whether it's folding clothes. Oh, we wash all the clothes and let them pile up, look like 10 people is, you know, sitting in the, in the washroom. No, develop a finishing mindset as to where you finish everything. That is one of the major keys to success. You got to be able to finish the things that you start. Because if you can't finish a small task, you got laundry, somebody got a laundry room full of clothes right now. It's clean as a whistle. If you can't finish the small task, what you going to do when the big task fall in your lap? Now you got this big task sitting here and you don't know how to handle it because you don't know how to finish a small task. Okay. And these, these are things that I want you to pass on. I want you to soak it in, but I also want you to drill that and start working that into your children. If they can't finish a small task, when the man upstairs send you the big task, cause he gonna send it to you. He gonna give it to you. He gonna put it in your lap, but you gotta be ready to finish it and do it once you get it in your hand. So develop a finishing mindset, okay? Finish everything, no matter how small. Start raining a little bit, you outside, you cutting the grass, push through it. Power through it. Say, you know what? Let me go ahead and get this done. Let me just go ahead and knock this out. 
Just develop a finishing mindset. Don't leave nothing behind. Don't leave nothing on the table. That's how you win. Because when you get into business, like some of you guys are, I know some of you already talked about wanting to have a business, wanting to start a business. The big boys who sit at the, the long wooden table, they know how to finish. Okay? They not, and they're not chasing the bag. The bag is chasing them. And that's where you want to be. At one point in time, we was chasing the bag. Now I get the phone call from Dubai. It says, hey, we may want you to come in November and talk to some students out here. But you got to put in the work first and learn how to finish. You got a pile of clothes sitting in on, on the laundry board. OK, OK, so, oh, my gosh, we're getting right out of time. All right, guys, finish your mindset, man. That's 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 super important. The investment. OK, we're going to talk about the investment for a little bit. First thing you need to do when you start talking about the investment is you have to recognize your opportunity. OK, opportunities are always all around you. But you know what happens? We don't see it because we're not paying attention. OK, sometimes the promotion that you want is right there. It's right there waiting for you, but you didn't recognize the opportunity, so you let it pass you by. OK, the mentor that you need is going to help you with your career. He's right there waiting for you, but you don't see him. You don't give him the time of day. You didn't make the correlation and that was somebody who could help you in your career. So you missed another opportunity. OK, the project that you're supposed to be working on is going to help you with your career. But you said, man, I don't want to do that because that's too much extra work. I don't want to do that because I'm not getting paid any more to do it. You just missed you. Just, again, you just missed your opportunity. OK, you have to learn. In order to move forward and be successful, you got to learn how to recognize the opportunity, guys. And that's a part of the investment, okay? You got to be curious. That's the other part of your investment. You have to be able to look around and say, you know what? I think we can do this a different way. And when you do that and you take it to your manager and you explain it and you put that proposition out there, they may create a position for you. Don't think that's far-fetched because it's not, because they did it for me. I had an idea. I took it into management. I said, look, we wasted money. This gives us a much better return if we do it this way. They say, you know what? You're right. We want you on this project. Forget about what you're doing right now. Come and work on this. That's how you create your own opportunity. But sometimes you got to be curious. And not like this, not like this all day. Man, I'm ready. I don't know. I'm ready to go home. You're going to miss your opportunity by not being curious. That's the part of the investment. And the last part of the investment, guys, is persevere. Okay? Persevere. No matter what happens, you have to learn how to continue to move forward at all costs. You have to learn how to persevere. When I was a senior in college, I was on my way, headed out of town, me and my best friend. We go out of town to the next city. We go to his brand new apartment. I'm hanging out. I'm talking to him. We go upstairs to his room. And all of a sudden, I look over and he had fallen on the floor. I thought he was being funny, goofing around. Maybe he had tripped up and was having a joke. I turned him over. I looked in his eyes. And I noticed that he had lost all his body fluids. I held him in my arms right there in the apartment to close his eyes. And he took his last breath right there in my lap. My best friend for six years of going through college and undergrad had passed away right there in my arms. The very next Monday, that was on a Saturday, that Monday I had a job interview. I didn't want to go, but I knew that I had to dig deep and somehow find a way to persevere and move through the situation so that I could continue to elevate myself because I'm trying to make what? I'm trying to make the investment. OK, and when it's time to make the investment, sometimes you got to dig deeper and go someplace that you don't necessarily want to go. My best friend is dead in front of me. You think I want to go to a job interview? No. But I also knew I had to persevere no matter what. OK, so those those are the three keys that we're probably you know going to end up ending on. Recognize your opportunity when it's in front of you. Continue to be curious and ask questions. Observe your environment, take ideas, you know, go above and beyond to do things and know how to persevere no matter what. Okay. No matter what the situation is, 
got to keep moving forward. You got to continue to tell your kids to move forward as well. All right. Uh, how much time we got? So, as you're moving through, I want let's talk about the harvest real quick. Dr. Luke, put a time. How much time I got left? <clears throat> I think you said we had six minutes. You're down to two. I'm down to two minutes. Lord, yeah. I'm down yeah. Two and, minutes. and if you, yeah, and our next presenters are in the room. So, in the room. You. Okay. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> Guys, this is the harvest. Okay. We went through the struggle. We made the investment. We got to the harvest. I'm a writer. We sell books. We work with students, adult learners, and kids all over the country. We get to fly around, you know, do all kinds of cool things. But you see the hard work. You still see the investment right there in the middle. That's what the investment looks like. Okay, so don't be afraid to make the investment. We have books that talk about preparing yourself for life after high school. We have workbooks. We have online courses. All of this is the harvest. Okay, this is after the investment, after the struggle, then comes the harvest. And that's what you're seeing now. We have ebooks, electronic books. We're moving in a great space, we're doing all kinds of different things. Okay, this is my contact information. Go ahead, you know, take a picture of it, take your phone out, get a picture of it, take a screenshot of it. You can email us, you can call us, you can visit us online at the website, which is um, www.velocityeducationgroup. I would love to hear from you guys. You know, if you want to talk more about starting your own business, you know, if you want to learn more about things like that, you know, we're more than glad to help the students um, in this group, give you information on that. Iris, I know you talked about it earlier. Um, that's one of the things that we do. We work with small businesses and help them get incorporated and things like that. So. That's it, guys. That is the investment, the struggle, and the harvest. You had an opportunity to see all three phases. So I thank everybody for chiming in. I thank everybody for um, hitting the chat. Again, feel free. We like family now because we getting off the struggle bus. We moving on to big and better things. Reach out to us, call us, text us, email us, purchase our products. You know, you can pick up the books, you can pick up the eBooks um, and just uh, enjoy yourself, man, and learn how to be successful and continue to move forward. Keep working with your kids. Don't let them spoil out the Chick-fil-A, Target, and, and, and Starbucks. Just make sure that they know that there's somebody on the other side that doesn't have the things that they have, okay? Paul, I appreciate your comments. Iris, appreciate your comments. Uh, Tamika, appreciate you as well. Mimi, appreciate you. Make sure you hit me. Iris, I got a guide. It's a basic guide on how to start a business. It's right here. It's only $9. It's a short five-pager. You can download that and be off to the races, have your business rolling in 30 days, okay? All right, guys, I think um, it's probably time for me to unshare my screen so that the next group can go.